Hello everybody and welcome to this week's uh, session on building sector management. This is actually the second time that I record this uh, video tonight. The first time I had Ben, George, Tim and Annette with me. Unfortunately the software that I use to create these videos crashed. So I'm just quickly going through what we discussed again. Alright so tonight just a short session uh, about uh, six or seven slides just dealing with uh, the different sectors in the market. So let's have a quick look at what we did previously. Last week we had a look at the history of the industry. We uh, saw where it came from, why it's important for the economy in Australia and we also saw that the contribution to the GDP is quite considerable. So from an economic importance point of view um, we really represent about uh, 7 or 8 percent of the GDP for Australia which makes it really a profitable industry to be in and also one that the government is continuously noticing. All right, so you'll see in the next couple of months more and more notice is going to be taken of the construction industry as the global uh, boom in the, in the market continues. Uh, all the work that's being done in the uh, uh, northern central Queensland areas, gas to liquid plants, the LNG plants, mining booms in Western Australia, all of those are going to influence the uh, economy of course. All right, we also had a look at the structure and the role players of the industry, um, the drivers in the industry. So that would be the community importance, political uh, pests. So that would be political, environmental, technology and sociological. All of those are going to have an influence on the, uh, the drivers of the industry. And then, of course, the social importance. We spoke about that also. All right, so this week we're just going to do a short introduction to the government and of course the different roles and responsibilities that the government has to play and fulfill. Look at the uh, single slide on science and technology, uh, why it's important for the government to keep on investing in those fields and then of course the national and global initiatives in the industry. How do we uh, cross the chasm basically, uh, so to speak. All right, so if we look at the Australian government for a second there, you can see that we've got uh, basically the three parts, federal, state and local. And uh, the local ones, they, they typically the guys that's going to be in our faces. They are the ones that approve our plans and uh, work through our development approvals with us. All right. So typically we won't have too much to do with the federal and state. But let's have a look at the roles from federal point of view. So they're responsible for defense of Australia. Um, typically, if you think of a, uh, well, a while ago, Western Australia wanted to become their own country. Uh, because it's just so far removed, they sit on a lot of resources, it's really a booming state. But from a defense point of view, it would be difficult. The logistics is just too big and uh, it's just not doable at that stage. All right, so also foreign affairs, really important from a federal point of view, determining how we're going to deal with uh, international trade, how we're going to deal with international uh, politics, how do we represent ourselves at the United Nations. Also broad legal system, um, so remember federal uh, represents the umbrella effect, they sit on top of all the others, so federal law uh, would overrule a state uh, rule. Alright, so there we go, and also then of course national uh, infrastructure, the national highways, that would be a part of the federal government's responsibility. If we jump over the line to the state, you'll see courts and prisons in there. And of course, uh, the police force, they sit in there as well. Each state with its own police force. And what we can see at the moment, uh, yesterday and the day before, is industrial action, um, even in the police force. All right, So that's also happening at the moment, New South Wales. All right, and then of course, communities, hospitals, utilities, um, typically power, uh, water, that type of thing, uh, communications for telephones, that type of thing would be part of the state uh, responsibility. Remember that the federal government is responsible overall for the infrastructure uh, or communication uh, from that point of view. Uh, state highways, important there for us. Uh, remember that uh, between the federal and the state highways and also local, uh, local government, there might be different uh, sections of the road that they're responsible for. In Queensland, we have, of course, the uh, Bruce Highway, and that's uh, obviously always a bone of contention because uh, it's in need of upgrade. Um, as soon as you go past uh, uh, the Sunshine Coast, the road becomes really bad, and, and that's been one of the political balls been chucking around for ages. Right, so if we look at the local uh, government, uh, 
uh, environmental protection services uh, development approvals remember what we said about development approvals these these are the ones that we're going to see in our faces and of course parks and gardens interestingly enough uh, sports and utilities uh, entertainment also part of the local responsibility if we look at the different roles from a government perspective uh, we can see there's the legislator uh, planning zones who does what where um, safety and security and then of course also the ato uh, sits in there with the tax uh, from a client perspective um, many times the government would be on the receiving end of a project so sitting um, and remember client from a client perspective if the government is the client they fulfill all the roles and responsibilities that we normally have from a private practice client as well. All right, uh, I've added in the partner because uh, last week we spoke about uh, private and public partnerships and this is really a booming business at the moment. Um, you'll see that whenever the government runs out of cash for a, a new project or development, um, it might be interested in going into a public-private partnership with uh, the private practice. All right, so typically, uh, projects that I've seen before, toll roads, dams, bridges, prisons, and hospitals. All right, so from a regulator point of view, um, the government, local, state, federal, has to evaluate and approve projects. And you'll see a lot of these strategic projects are approved at uh, federal level, meaning that that would overrule the state. All right, so towns where that's happened now recently, is uh, Bundaberg and um, uh, Gainda. You'll, if you do a search, a Google search on those projects in Bundaberg, you'll see that re recently the government uh, overruled the local community or the local government and applied uh, pressure to get a big strategic project going. All right, uh, from a contractor point of view, complete the projects and typically if the uh, remember the government will never execute the project on their own, they will also always outsource it and um, more towards a management type role um, that's the role that they'll fulfill there uh, as a designer uh, once again they'll be involved in the development process making sure that the scope of the project is uh, firmly de defined and that they know exactly what they're going to get if we look at the government as a client you can see there um, what I try to do is show you uh, the 10 year difference between 2005 and 2010 over there and you can see there's a big jump between the residential work done and non-residential work done all right so the biggest one over there of course non-residential buildings all right so that would typically be hospitals uh, schools anything like that uh, that the government invested in um, uh, because of the drivers of the uh, industry which would be con community need all right and engineering and construction work remember last week we spoke about uh, building and construction what's the difference in the definition between the two and um, it's really important to see there that the engineering construction work over there did not really grow that much so engineering construction work would be plants uh, facilities uh, processing plants power stations while non-residential would be infrastructure like plan uh, like roads dams anything like that railways all right so you can see there the growth over the last five years or so it's about eight eight and a half percent um, in total so it's considerable growth and we can expect that growth to continue as we go along all right so the government as designer and contractor uh, one of the big projects that uh, recently kicked off was the building education revolution and uh, it basically deals with rapid construction and refurbishment of schools uh, for the education sector um, this project was not um, well thought out in, in many opinions and now it's being plagued by quality issues all right and this is typical for any rapid construction project where we have a, a fast timeline you can see that uh, quality always falls off the side of the line all right so remember that uh, on these fast based uh, projects that quality is always an issue we also see that uh, the government as a designer and contractor is typically responsible for all of these hospitals, state highways, universities and schools, um, opening up quite a lot of expenditure into the market sector. All right, so if we look at uh, science and technology, the most important ones there I've highlighted already for us 
um, from a construction industry point of view, built environment point of view, most probably the most important ones there is the uh, CSIRO. All right, doing a lot of research into building methods, materials, um, trying to find other methodologies. Uh, the Cooperative Research Centers and Construction Innovation. That's another area where there's a lot of growth in the, the last couple of months and we'll see some more development in the new year. Um, what I've done is I've also given you a link there to the uh, Government Science, te 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 Science and Technology uh, website. So you can go and access that and uh, get some more information over there. If we think about the developing of competitiveness, how do we do it at national level? And we do it by controlling the environment. So it's making sure everybody plays by the same rules. We, uh, we sort of create a little bit of uh, competition there between everybody because now the field is level. All right, so the industry specific um, tools that we use, the BCA and the NCC, uh, basically just the name change there, uh, that's the rules that we have to use in the market and that controls where everything is going. All right, so on top of that, also the Construction Industry Development Agency, they do a lot of work trying to develop the industry further, making sure that the reputation grows. Uh, together with that, the professional organizations, for instance, the AIBS, the Australian Institute of Building Surveyors, and the AIB, Australian Institute of Building, they up there trying to really push forward our plight in, the, in government. From an international point of view, the uh, foreign affairs and trade, something that we have to think about is the cost of labor in a country like China or other countries in the Far East. And once again, immediately we start thinking about uh, the Qantas debacle that's going on at the moment. Right, so trying to outsource that to a different country because labor is cheaper, we're going to see more and more of those um, instances occurring in Australia. Well, just because uh, in different countries they have different laws, their cost of labor obviously a little bit cheaper because they do have an abundance of that. All right, so uh, remember that your assessment item number one, that's due this Sunday, um, and it's uh, Queensland time. Remember that it's uh, on Sunday, five minutes to 12 is the deadline for you to upload your assignment. Everything is online, um, everything electronic. You don't have to post it. And uh, yeah, any other questions, please post it onto the forum and I'll be able to respond to that. All right, great stuff. And I'll see you guys next week.